We <laughs> just happen to be down on the shore here with a group of our students from the Endeavour Society. That's the School of Ocean Sciences Student Society. And Ben is the acting chairman at the moment. Step forward, Ben. Yeah. And Ben has organised this trip down here. We've got, we've got, we've got um, a, a group here now going to be looking at the Zostra, but we're also looking specifically for razor. We found Venerupis, quite a few live Venerupis. We found some Pimenia galena. Yeah. We found several Pecten Maximus, the big scallop, the great scallops, we've let those go yeah. and we've had a look at those. I think the, uh, the whole idea is how you look at a, a kind of underwater meadow really, that this meadow here is exposed only on lowest of spring time. Looks like a wrasse, a probabilian wrasse, and just caught it by chasing it onto the beach, by just onto the sand and trapped it in a corner and just grabbed it. Okay, so we, we've just seen a squirt of water on the surface and there's the two sort of sinkholes areas and we've got two here, so I'm going to put salt on both and see um, if they come up in a few minutes, the razor clams come up. We're fairly low on the, on, down on the shore on, on the rocks here where we have kelp uh, and you can probably see the holdfasts of the kelp attached to the, to the rock, this sort of ramifying root structure and then the long fronds which most people are familiar with uh, sticking out here a little bit higher up on the on the rock there are the the racks this is this is the serrated rack which is the one of the uh, about four or five species which grows lowest on the shore if we work down the rock and onto the onto the sediment uh, as well as some green seaweeds, here's a bit of uh, sea lettuce. There are these green fronds, which are actually not an alga at all, but a flowering plant. Um, flowering plant, which is um, in colloquial terms called a seagrass, but it is actually uh, a thing called Zostera marina. This particular place, it's about the only place in Wales where you can see an extensive bed of it and walk out onto it. Elsewhere you would need to put your wetsuit and your snorkel into your mouth to go and have, have a look at it. Uh, the, the, the other thing is that, of course, it's a flowering plant, not, not an alga like most of the things which go on, on the shore. There are other uh, flowering plants like this elsewhere in the world, living in the sea, um, like Posidonia and so on. And some of these, of course, are really interesting because they're the main foods of things like manatees and dugongs, which, of course, we don't have in Wales. <laughs> it's also a wonderful area acting as a nursery for young fish, small prawns and various other little creatures of, of, of that sort. So it, it has an importance beyond the few hectares that the actual bed makes up. The scientific name of this, this alga is Halidris siliquosa and where you have uh, sort of whole beds of it the 15 spine sticklebacks uh, live amongst it and attach, I think attach their eggs to it. The big scallop, Pecten maximus and if we turn it over on the underside you can actually see the growth rings. They usually start off quite quite small in the first year. A good second year ring there, a third there, fourth, probably fifth on, on the edge. They, laid, you know, they stop growing and leave a ring at the end of each year. Normally lives, of course, that side up, hence the way the, the weed is growing on the surface of it and uh, effectively camouflaging it. <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> you can turn it. So I think we'll then we'll turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, well, well. Good Back in his little notch. <laughs> <laughs>